Valentine's Day, so I thought we'd take the opportunity to make a little something sweet for our sweeties, whether they be big ones or little ones. How about a crocheted envelope? This is the perfect size for a gift card, and you don't necessarily have to just make them for Valentine's Day. They're good for birthdays or Christmas or any other time of the year when you think a little gift card might be an appropriate something for someone special. And the cool thing about this is that it's actually a functioning envelope. There's a little button closure, there's a little buttonhole that holds the whole thing shut, and when we open it up, there, there's a little card inside. This is also a little simple tutorial that I took the opportunity to make. It's glueless and it's a ribbon bound card and you can use ribbon, embroidery thread, or yarn to make your card. It's double layered and it's just big enough to slip a gift card into. <laughs> and that's what my sweetie's getting for Valentine's Day this year. Then the whole thing fits back into the envelope, buttons up, and we're all ready to go. <laughs> so that's what we're gonna make today. One nifty little envelope. This is also a good striping project. So I'm gonna show you guys how to make simple color changing stripes as well. So consider it like a technique that you're learning. Mm, yeah, sure, we'll go with that. <laughs> Anyway, let's go to the craft table and make ourselves up some envelopes. <laughs> In order to make our envelope, I'm doing a two color envelope so I can do a couple of things. I can show you how to do a color change as you go along on the street. And I also like the striping effect that it creates. I'm going to use my favorite 4.25 millimeter hook or a G6, and I also know that this is a size uh, a 7, I think, in the UK, and that could mean that it's a 4.0 millimeter or 4.25, so either one of these is just fine. You're going to need uh, some needles and thread because you've got a button to sew on in this project, so you want to pick yourself out a button. It doesn't matter what size, you just pick your button first before you um, get to the point where you need to put it on. You need a safety pin. This is optional. You may not need this, but um, there is a little bit uh, in this project where you have to tack your work for a moment, so having a safety pin on hand is a good idea. You also need scissors and a yarn needle and, of course, your choice of yarn. I'm using worsted weight acrylic, and this is a size 4, and you can see that both of these are basically the same size. Not all yarn is created the same, as I'm sure you've discovered, um, but these are roughly the same size, so it won't agitate the striping too much. So two colors of worsted weight yarn, and that's all we need. Let's get started. I am going to start with the pink. Um, you guys can start with whatever you color you like. So pick a starting color, doesn't really matter which one, but I like the pink. I'm going to make a slip knot. And I like to make slip knots using my hook, but you can make a slip knot in any way that you like, as long as you get the desired effect. And make sure that your knot can move around on top of your hook comfortably. Now, I am making an envelope that's going to be able to fit my card. So if you have your card or the little um, gift card that you're going to put into your envelope. It's good to have that on hand so that you can chain a foundation row that will be um, big enough that your uh, card or gift card can fit into. So I like to start things in sets of 10 and I know that 10 won't be big enough so I'm going to start with 20. 1, 2, 3, 4, 17, 18, 19, 20. So there is a foundation row of 20 chains. Now I'm going to compare it against my card and it looks like I've got two overhang here and maybe about one there and I don't want this to be too tight so I'm going to give it one more so that my foundation row, there we go, will be 21. Now you guys can create a foundation row that's going to fit whatever card or gift card you're going to use. But 21 looks like it's going to work for me. And I have to add one more for a turning chain. Remember, you've always got a turning chain. And since we're single crocheting, you only need one turning chain. So for me, I've crocheted 22 chains. And my foundation, so my foundation row is 22 chains. And my stitch count for each row is actually going to be 21 because I'm always going to need a turning chain and you don't count that. 
So now I'm going to start single crocheting. I identify the second chain from the hook. So there's the first, that's the turning chain. We don't work that one. There's the second. That's the first place that I'm going to make a stitch. So I take my hook and I put it through that chain, wrap my yarn, and I pull up a loop so that I have two loops on my hook, wrap my yarn again, and pull through both. And that is a single crochet. Try not to split your yarn. <laughs> and now you're going to single crochet across each chain in your foundation row. So for me, I will have a total of 21 chains when I am finished my foundation row. And because what we're making is a tall rectangle, every single row that I have after my first row will have 21 stitches in it. So every row will have 21 stitches. Okay, I'm just finishing row one. Now if you are unsure, you might want to go back and count. It's always good to count your stitches unless you're really comfortable that you haven't missed any chains. So I just counted as I went and I have 21 stitches here. So now we need to make row two. We're going to stay with this uh, first color. So whatever your first color, your color A is, you're going to continue with that for now. So in order to work a second row, you chain one because you have to have a turning chain at the end of every row. Turn your work. So now we're working back the other way. Skip that chain. So if you look at it from the top down, you see that there's, it looks the same way as your foundation row. There's the first chain from the hook and there's the second. Well, technically that's the top now of a stitch, but it still looks like a chain. So identify the second one and it's into that stitch that you're going to work your first single crochet of row two. And you're going to work each stitch, the whole stitch, single crochet all the way across to the end of row two and I will see you at the end of row two. Okay, I'm just finishing row two. Again, I have 21 stitches in row two and you can see that there's a nice sort of rectangular effect going here. We're going to continue with color A for one more row. So row three will still be the same color. You come to the end of a row, remember to chain one for your turning chain, flip your work, and then identify not the turning chain, but the first real stitch, and that's what you work into. And we're gonna continue single crochet in each stitch across until we get to the end of row three and then we're going to change colors. Okay, that's the end of row three. Now, because we're going to change colors, you do not have to chain here. So you don't have to chain because we are changing colors. We've done three rows of color A. For me, that's pink. Now, we're going to change colors. So this is how to change colors when you're striping. Um, obviously there's a lot of ways you can do this and um, not everybody likes to follow the same way but I just find this is the easiest and it uses up less yarn. So I'm going to snip my yarn and I'm going to fasten off. So what you do is you just grab that little tail and pull it back through your loop like that and give it a nice tug and you've fastened off. So now there's three rows. Uh, it's the beginning of our envelope and it's all in pink or for me that's that's color A. So now pretend like you chained, flip your work so that the cast off string is right here on your top right and get your other color. So we're going to join color number two now and we're going to make a slip knot just like we did with the first color. Make sure it's not too tight or too loose on your hook. We're going to attach with a slip stitch. So you put your hook through the first stitch, make sure it's the first one. Have that loop of the new color on your hook. And I like to try and keep all my little short tails out of the way. Pinch them down against my work if I have to. Grab the yarn and pull it up through that stitch and out through 
that loop that was on your hook and that's joining with a slip stitch. Now because we have to single crochet you need to create a chain that brings your work up to the right level. So kind of like a turning chain even though we haven't actually turned anything here. Chain one and now we're going to single crochet. So you single crochet back into that same stitch that you joined in and in a pattern that would be called single crochet in same stitch as joining and that pretty much keeps sort of a, an even flatness up the side of your work but you don't have to worry too too much about that right now all you want to make sure is that you have the same number of stitches in every row so I like to work over top of my little tails just to weave them in as I go if that's too tricky for you don't worry about it you can weave them in later that's what the yarn needle is for but if you can it's just sort of a nice efficient way to work them into your work and you're going to repeat this you're going to single crochet in each stitch across and you're going to single crochet three rows in color B so for me that's white and at the end of another three rows you're going to fasten off color B and change back to color A. You're going to do three rows of each color until you've reached 30 rows in total. Now, if you're making an envelope for a bigger card, then you're going to want to make sure that your rectangle is tall enough that one third of it will cover your card. But because I'm making this envelope for a gift card, and a card that's really not that much bigger than it, I know that I only need to do about 30 rows. But I'm going to check at row 10, just to make sure that what I know would be a third is going to be tall enough to cover my little card. So I've finished my rectangle, and I knew that it was tall enough, because I kept checking by taking my card and making sure that there was enough coverage in the first third and then enough in the second third and I what I mean by that is if I fold up almost all the way to the top I've got enough to cover my card now I can keep going up here and make this longer but what I want essentially is a fold over flap that makes it look like a little envelope and you can see that there's sort of a definite envelope shape happening here and six rows is enough for me but you might want it to be a little longer or you might want it to be a little shorter that's up to you so that's why I always suggest making sure that whatever you're making the envelope for you have it on hand and it's always better to err on the side of a little bit bigger so I'm comfortable with my rectangle I started with my color A and I have finished with my color A. You don't have to do that, you can finish with color B, but I like the way that looks and I'm also going to border it using color A. So this is my finished rectangle and from here on out this is how you make your rectangle into an envelope. As before you're going to fold up your bottom flap so that it's in alignment with the row that you know um, is going to create enough of a pocket for your card or your gift card or whatever you're putting in here. In order to uh, make this a little easier, so for example I know that at the bottom of my, um, my, my second last strip or stripe, so at the bottom of the last white stripe here, I know that that's where my the bottom of my fabric needs to be alignment with. Um, so I could eyeball this all the way around but sometimes it's easier to actually pin it. So this is why I suggest you have either a safety pin or you can even use a small thin crochet hook or your yarn needle. And all you're going to do is just run it through the fabric kind of like a giant sewing needle and you're just going to pin it in place and that's all you're going to do there. It's just to keep it up and allows you to work a little easier. So I have left my loop open because I'm going to continue working around with this color but you guys can, if you were going to change your color, you can just knot off here like you would if you were finishing a regular row or um, you can knot off completely and try a third color. This is sort of up to you but for simplicity's sake I'm going to continue off using this loop. So if you were going to cut your your yarn, 
um, you would go ahead, fasten off like you would at the end of a regular row. And if you already did, that's fine too. All you need to do is just rejoin your yarn up here in that top left stitch. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to chain one. And instead of turning my work, I'm going to work down the side of my fabric. So I know that the first two stripes, um, it's just going to be one single piece of fabric. And all I'm going to do is just single crochet. And this is sort of to even up the awkward edge. And it's not going to be perfect, so don't worry about it being a little wiggly. But what you want to do is work one single crochet into the edge of each row. So for example, if your stripes are three rows tall, you want to make sure you have a single single crochet at the end of each of those rows. And I'm going to work a single crochet into the end of each of those rows for the first two stripes or the first six rows. Now I've reached the point where my flap has been turned up and is pinned and now I'm going to work through both of these sides together. So this is going to take you a little bit of time. You want to make sure you pick up one end of a row on the first side and pick up the end of a row on the corresponding side so that you're working through both sides at the same time. And you're just going to continue the single crochet and you're just going to take your time. It's going to be a little bit awkward but not terribly so. And if you have to, pick up one end of a row and then the other end of a row just so you know you're getting a full kind of piece of a stitch on both sides. You can also whip stitch this if you like, but I like the effect of single crocheting down the side. As you can see, it kind of makes it look neat and tidy. It also holds it together a lot better. So you're just going to go ahead and work all the way down this first side. Try not to split your yarn. <laughs> and when you get to the bottom, just make sure that when you, you're, you may have a, a stripe that's folded directly in half, so you're going to have like a, a single sort of, sort of half a row or a, a half of a row left. Um, just you want, you want to do is make this just sort of even, so just sort of cheat a single crochet through the bottom of that last row and just stick your needle in there or your hook anywhere it'll go and create a single crochet. There we go. And fasten off. There. And now you're going to flip your work over and you're going to attach your yarn in this bottom corner and you're going to work all the way up. And this is starting to look a whole lot like an envelope. Remember to join your yarn with a slip knot. There you go. And because this is that sort of half a row at the bottom, just stick your hook in any old place. Right at the bottom. There we go. And I'm going to join with a slip stitch. I'm going to chain one and single crochet in that same place. And I'm going to work, I'm going to try and make sure that all of my stripes are aligned. I'm going to work one more single crochet through the edges of that pink row. And now I'm going to work single crochet at the end of each row up the side on this side. When you get to the top, don't fasten off. 
So basically you've worked all the way down this side and you fastened off and we'll weave in these ends later. Then you've joined your yarn at the other bottom corner, worked all the way up, and now we're back to the top row. And this is going to be the flap. So we can remove our sort of stationary pin with kind of keeping it all together. And now we're going to work across the top. So all I'm going to do here is single crochet until I get to the middle of my envelope. So for example, my envelope is 21 stitches across and the exact middle would be about the 10 or 11 sort of stitch mark. So about the middle is where I know it's going to wind up connecting with where I want to put my button because this is the closure on your envelope and my button's going to sit right in the middle so I am going to single crochet up to the middle two stitches in my in my row here and in order to do that I'm going to chain one because I'm at a corner just so that makes it a little bit bendable for me and I'm going to single crochet into that same top stitch that I ended my row in but this doesn't have to be perfect you guys can just sort of make that corner work any way you want and I'm going to single crochet across the top of my envelope there we go so I'm now about halfway across I know that that's roughly where I'm going to match up with my button so now I need to make a little closure or a button loop so because it's a small button I'm going to chain two and I'm going to single crochet into the very next stitch and this is going to be like my little buttonhole and I'm not making a very big buttonhole because like I say I have a very small button and you got to remember that stitch work will stretch a little bit so make it a little bit smaller than your button and it'll hold it shut if you're using a bigger button you might want to use three chains maybe maybe even four if it's a really big button but uh, it doesn't have to be too big. Then I'm going to finish the single crochet across the top of the edge of my envelope. And when I get to the end corner, I'm going to fasten off and I'm going to weave in all of my ends. And I'm just going to end with a slip stitch in the top corner. Knot off. Now I'm going to weave in all my ends, and that is what the yarn needle is for. I like to just pick up some stitches, thread in the little end, and just pull it in. And if I've got a little bit left, I'll trim it. Because this isn't an item of clothing and it's not going to take a whole lot of abuse, you don't have to worry too much about making sure that your your little ends are really sort of woven in tightly because it's very unlikely that they're going to come back out. Once you've woven in all of your ends, it's time to attach the button. And you want to make sure you put your button on right about where you put your button hole. So if you have to, you can mark it in place with your darning needle or your yarn needle and then you're just going to thread up a needle and thread and sew your button to the top part of your envelope. Be careful not to go through both sides otherwise your envelope will be sewn shut and then you won't be able to put anything in it. There, I've sewn on my button and now I'm going to put my little card with my gift card inside my envelope make sure everything's tucked in nice and neatly and I'm going to button it up there, there you have it and you know me I can't help but put a little something on it and what's cuter than a little heart stamp <laughs> now this can go through the love post <laughs> oh that's so cheesy if you'd like I'm going to link the tutorial for this little heart down below in the comment box and I will also put our website down there and you can go to our website and download a free copy of the PDF for this pattern for this little heart and you can put a heart on your envelope too.
<laughs> one crocheted envelope with a heart stamp and a button closure, perfect size for a gift card and other little treats. <laughs> and it's good any time of the year. Thank you so much for tuning in, everybody. Please remember to like this video and share it with your friends. And if you haven't already subscribed, please do so. I invite you to join the Big Crafty family here at Jada and Stitches. You can also follow me on Etsy, Facebook, Google+, Pinterest, and Instagram at Jada and Stitches. That's it for this week, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Bye. <laughs> I gotta go hide this now. <laughs>